Good morning. How's it going? Is everybody in, uh, enjoying this one service that we all have together? Welcome to everybody, uh, all of our in-person and online family. We love you guys so much. So some of you guys are our, our first service crowd. Some of you guys are right where you belong, second service, come on. And then some of you guys are a third service crowd, which if you're a third service, you're probably like, you don't understand about the amount of sleep I lost. I get it, okay? It's all right, yeah. First service, it was better for you, right? You get to sleep in a little bit. But thank you guys so much for being with us today. Again, we love you guys so much. Uh, we're excited for church. Who's excited for church today? Come on, let's go. We're starting a brand new series today called Rooted. I am so excited about this series. Um, just to, to kind of let you know, give you a sneak peek, this whole series is about God's Word. You're like, isn't everything we talk about on Sundays about God's Word? It's like, yes, but also, this is going, this, this four-week series we're going to do uh, is, is us coming in and we're taking a specific deep dive at the Bible, at Scripture, uh, looking at the importance of God's Word in our lives, um, looking at ways that we can better uh, or help ourselves to better understand what we're reading when we read God's Word and, and what it means for our lives and just so much more uh, than sometimes I think we realize God has for us and how He speaks to us through His Word. So super excited for this series. Um, but before we jump into the actual series, I want to quickly take a moment to talk about this, uh, this kind of spot we're in uh, today. Um, if there's anything that I think we've learned as human beings over the last two years uh, is that the unexpected can happen, amen? Um, life can change in an instant. Things can get wonky and weird, and it, and it just happens. Um, as we've dealt with COVID, it's been something that we've learned and experienced more and more and more, but I also believe that we've grown and strengthened and, and learned to navigate and built endurance through it as well, so praise God for that. Um, but that doesn't mean uh, still that when these unexpected moments happen in life that they're just easy, um, so I don't know about you guys, but I know that right now we're in one of those expected moments that might be pretty tough for some of us. Um, we've got the, the, the surge of COVID and other sicknesses going around right now, and it's a lot to handle. A lot of people are, are sick. They're at home. Some people are online right now because they're in quarantine. We love you guys, and we're praying for you. Um, so many things are happening that can be stressful because of that. Um, not only that, <clears throat> but some of you guys have kiddos, and your, the schools are closed down. So you're a parent who has to work uh, from 9 to 5, but you're at home doing that while trying to take care of your kids and help them with, with what they need because maybe they're just not connecting well with school at home and that they do better in person. There's so many different things that come with that. And on top of all of that stuff, you just have the normal stresses of life. And we can admit today that life comes with some stress sometimes. Amen? Amen. So you put all that together. And maybe today, I guess my point is, you're in a spot where you're like, hey, I'm tired. And this unexpected change really really hit me hard this time. It, it really threw a curveball in my direction. And, and I just want to remind you of something really quick, okay? And this comes from, uh, from Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. It says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So my, my, my goal of, of reading that to you is not to give you kind of like a, a little Band-Aid moment for the season or the moment that you're in, and not to say, hey, sorry, I know it stinks, but you'll get through it, you know? Um, but I do just want to remind you um, that even in the midst of all the things that we've got going on, the number one thing that we can do is put our hope in Jesus Christ. The number one thing that we can do in a situation that is unexpected, a situation that brings stress, and a situation that leaves us feeling broken is turn our eyes to Jesus and ask for his help and invite him in. Because when we do that, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we serve a really good God who cares about his kids and wants to see them grow and become better and stronger and greater. He comes into our lives and, and, and he builds us up. He grows us. He teaches us. He, he provides for us and all the things that we need. Uh, and he helps us to realize that even when things, okay, getting to this place, even when things don't go the way we had hoped, things turn out for the worst sometimes, that God still has a plan for us that he is with us, that he understands our pain and our frustration, and he's right there to help us every single step of the way. Amen? Amen. So again, I just want to remind you of that God is with us, God is for us, and he's building us in this season. We're going to come out of this season, this moment that we're in, this unexpected change, stronger than we were before because we're placing our hope in Jesus Christ. Can we pray together, church? Jesus, thank you so much for today. 
I thank you so much that we get to be here in your house together, Lord, that we get to be together online in our homes, God, that we just get to worship you, God, wherever we are, wherever we sit, wherever we stand, we can lift up the name of Jesus. And so I pray that today we do that, God. I pray that today in all that we say and all that we do in who we are as human beings, God, I pray that we glorify your name. Lord, I pray that you move in our hearts, God, that you bring change for the better, God. Help us to become the people that you have called us to be because you have absolutely called us, God. And one of the things you have called us into is a relationship with you today, Lord. And so as we dig into this series, God, and we talk about your word, I pray that we find uh, this, this importance, God that this importance just comes over our hearts, that, that, that pushes us to prioritize your word, God, because your word is important. Your word is a part of this relationship. Your word is how you speak to us in one way, God. It is, it is so big. And so today, Lord, I pray that we see you, God, and we see your word, and we prioritize it, Lord, that we move forward, that we dig in, and that we just want more of you, you God. Just like we sang, God, we want nothing else but you. We love you, God, and we thank you for today. Jesus, we praise your perfect name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. All right. Has anybody ever seen a really big, like, sequoia tree before? Have you ever heard of the sequoia trees in, like, Yosemite National Park in California? Has anybody ever seen one before, like, in person? Just curious. You've seen the really big ones? Crazy, right? Insane. Never seen one, just pictures, okay? But I've always wanted to go to a park like that and see these huge trees. We're in Oklahoma. We don't really get those kind of trees, you know what I'm saying? We get bushes. It's pretty cool. Um, And grass. (laughs) Um, So there was a tree, okay, in Yosemite National Park, uh, was actually started growing, came out of the ground, okay, uh, about 1600, 1606, I think is what it was, uh, and this tree um, became a ginormous sequoia tree, okay, grew for 400 years, y'all, uh, and grew to actually be around 240 feet tall over 400 years, okay, that's a big tree, so for some of you guys are like, I don't know, you're talking about sequoia tree, what is this, again, we live in Lot, and you're like, I don't, I don't know what any of that is, it's a ginormous tree, again, close to 240 feet tall is where it was, um, sadly, uh, early 2000s, I believe 2003 or so, um, one of these ginormous sequoia trees, one of the oldest and biggest ones they had in the national park, uh, ended up unexpectedly falling over, okay, just falling over out of the ground, just done, um, because of this and because it was such an important and historic tree, um, the park rangers started to investigate, hey, what, like, what happened here? This is a big, sturdy, awesome tree. Yes, it's been around for a long time, but for it to just fall over, that's insane. So they investigated. After a bunch of research and investigation, uh, the conclusion that they came to as to what caused the tree to fall down uh, was not what you'd expect. It was not some crazy wind or storm, right? It wasn't a lightning strike. There wasn't a flood that ran through the park and pushed this tree over. It wasn't like somebody went in there like a, a group of 100 people and took some axes to it, you know, like nothing like that. The actual reason what caused the tree to fall over was foot traffic, right? So you're in a national park. We like to go explore. We like to go look at these things. Over the years that this tree had been growing, so many people had come through the park and had walked over the roots of the tree that they had completely worn them down, so much so that the tree just couldn't stand anymore, and it ended up falling over. So because of this, one of the things they did in the park was they put in this new uh, rule or this new uh, practice to put fences around their most historic and important trees, right? And their goal was to protect the roots from being walked over, to, to keep foot traffic away so that these trees wouldn't fall over from these, these people just walking around checking out the park. They wanted people still there, but they wanted to protect their trees. So the moral of the story is for us today is stop stepping on tree roots, okay? I've seen some of you guys. You need to knock it off, okay? All right, that's it. We can go home. I'll see you guys next week. No, um, but seriously, this is a big deal, and I think it actually does have something to do with with us. As I, as I was reading about this story and looking into this sequoia tree, um, I, f- I felt like it was a good illustration of us as human beings. And here's what I, I mean by this is just like this big sequoia tree, I think all of us have things in our lives that are trampling the deep parts of who we are. You guys get what I'm saying? I think we all have things going on in the world around us that are hurting and trampling on our hearts and our souls. Maybe for some of us, it's a broken relationship. Maybe for some of us, we're, we're dealing with a relationship that just, it brings so much pain into our daily lives. Maybe for some of us, it's, it's things going on that we can't ne- necessarily control. Like maybe it's the politics that are happening in the world, okay? Maybe it's all this stuff that we see on the news and, and it's just bringing so much frustration and pain into our hearts and our lives every single day. Maybe it's personal addictions that we have. 
Maybe it's an endless to-do list that just feels so far out of reach that we're starting to lose hope and it just feels like we've been worn down and we're so tired. Maybe it's mental health issues. Like we prayed about this morning, like Matt did. Maybe, maybe inside, we're struggling to realize how important we truly are in this world and how loved we really are. We've all got our stuff. We've all got our issues, our, our, our situations, our circumstances, the pain that is causing our roots to be broken down. It's causing our foundation to fall apart and we feel lost, we feel broken. We feel like we're gonna fall over like this tree. But can I just tell you this today, church? That does not mean, no matter what we go through, we, we have not been given a sentence to just fall. Can you, can you turn to your neighbor right now? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you have not been sentenced to fall. Come on. You have not been sentenced to fall. Amen. And here, here's what I mean by this. This is what Proverbs 4, verse 23 says. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Our hearts, our souls, they need help. Our hearts need help. We kind of need something to protect our hearts, to help our hearts. But, but even more so, we need something that's going to keep us strong. We need something that's going to keep us sturdy. So when the wind and the waves and the foot traffic and all the things that life throws our way, because life will throw things our way, we want to stand strong. We want to stand firm and be ready and be able to get through it and not just come out the other side saying, whew, we made it, but saying, praise God for that season that I was just in. Thank God for what I learned, what I grew in, in that time. So how does that work then? How do we get to that place? Because again, it's not easy. When we're in those seasons and the foot traffic is happening and, and life is a struggle, it's not easy to go, it's all right, we're going to be good, you know, and just keep the smile on your face and keep pressing forward because, again, we feel so broken. How do we find that help for our souls? Because that's the real question. It's not necessarily, you know, uh, what is this thing that we're supposed to do, but, but where do we go to find that help? Where do we go to make sure that our hearts are protected, that they're being strengthened so that we can keep moving forward in the seasons that we're in? Where is it truly found? To figure this out, to answer this question, I want to take a look at a story in Scripture that I think a lot of us have heard before. If you've been coming to church for a while, you've probably heard this story, and it's about two sisters named Mary and Martha. Have you heard this before, right? Mary and Martha, and, and we see them quite a bit throughout Scripture. They pop up, uh, the sisters of Lazarus, right? And there's this moment that we're going to dig into today where Mary and Martha are at home, and uh, the one and only King of Kings shows up. Jesus himself shows up to their house, okay? And so let me give you kind of some background on this. Uh, they're hanging out. Jesus shows up, and Martha, this is her house, she invites Jesus in. I don't know about y'all, but when I read this passage, I'm always like, I can't imagine just like, you know, you're just hanging out at home one day, and it's like, knock, knock, and you're like, hey, Jesus, you know what I mean? It's like, come on in. You, you want some tea? I don't know. You want some coffee? Something like that? Uh, a Dr. Pepper, because you're in Oklahoma? I don't know. Yeah. Come on in. Um, so that's what happens. They come in, and then you see this whole thing happen, okay? We're going to see kind of a, a a difference between the sisters happen. Again, if you've heard this story, you know what I'm talking about. But they kind of, they take different routes in their response to the king of kings being in the home. So let's, let's read through this passage really quick. This is Luke chapter 10. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can f pull them out and follow along. We've also got the verses on the screen. But we're going to read through this, verses 38 through 42 really quick. Uh, it says, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was pre uh, preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Pretty crazy. Like, really quick interaction between Martha and Jesus. So let's, let's, let's break down what's actually happening between these two sisters when Jesus gets there. So the first person we're going to take a look at is Martha, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you all from the get-go, I feel for Martha, okay? I don't know about y'all, but um, I'll, I'll say this. The Bustos family, we, we enjoy hosting, Okay? Like we like having people over, and when we do, like we want to host well. It's our goal, okay? We may not always get it right, but we, we like to make sure that our house is ready. We like to have food, drinks. We like to have stuff for people. We like to have games, have a good time. We just want people to come in. We want them to feel at home. We want them to just enjoy their time in our house. Are you that person as well? Anybody else? You just want people, some of you are like, no, 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 I don't like hosting. I like to go to their house, and they take care of me. It's all right. I feel you. That's good. 
But we, we like that. We like to have people over and we like, to, we like to host. And so what we see is that kind of personality coming out of Martha, you know? Again, this is different than just having your friend who comes over and is like, hey, man, let's eat some pizza. It's like, no, Jesus is here. Jesus is in my house. And it, like Martha, I'm pretty sure most of us would go, hey, we need to get spotless in here. You know what I'm saying? Like the food needs to be cooked perfectly. It's like you're on, you know, the great British baking show. Like it's got to be perfect, okay? We got to make sure everything is great. I don't want you, like if there's a blind that's messed up, somebody fix it, put some curtains up. Like make this place look put together because the Lord himself is in our house. So again, I can feel for Martha. What she's trying to do, is she, again, she's trying to be a good host, right? She's trying to, to serve the Lord, She wants Jesus to feel comfortable in her home. She wants to honor him. She wants to glorify him in all that she's doing. It's for Jesus. And so this moment when Jesus comes in and he corrects her, I don't think Jesus is necessarily coming in and saying, Martha, you're doing all these wrong things. You're doing bad things. No, no, no. She's not doing anything wrong. But there's something that she's missing. Again, her heart, I believe, is in the right place. She wants to serve her Lord. She wants to love on him and make sure that he is comfortable and feels welcome in her home. And she doesn't want to let this opportunity just fall apart and slip through her fingers, right? But Jesus says again in verse 41, but the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. And there's only one thing, everybody say one thing. thing. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. All right, so then let's take a look at Mary. You got the sister Mary and where is Mary? She's sitting in the living room, right, at Jesus' feet, and she's listening and talking. So you got Martha running around getting stuff done, and she's doing all this stuff, and then she looks, she's like, where's Mary? She sees Mary just chilling, you know, just kind of laying there, you know? Kind of picture like, you know, like the kid who has their feet up like this, just kicking, like listening. That, that kind of does. She's sitting there at the feet of Jesus, and she's listening to the Lord speak, listening to him teach. And again, this is another moment where I feel for Martha because this makes me think. You, you see like, hey, the Lord is here. We're supposed to be prepping stuff, getting like, let's make sure this house is good and ready and comfortable for him. And let's make sure the food is great and it's all put together. And then you see your sister and she's not helping. You ever had that moment with a friend or a family member? You ever have that friend or family member who like just doesn't help? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I remember I've, I've had friends like, you know, I'm like carrying in groceries from the house and they're at the house. It's like, oh, carrying in. They're like, looks heavy. Like, yeah. Turns back to the TV, solid. You know, you ever had that person? You know, it's like you got it. Yeah. Well, not really. Good luck. You know, it's like what are you, what are you doing? It's like I feel like Martha kind of feels that with Mary right there. It's like, hey, I'm look at this load I'm carrying to make sure that everything this that this whole moment with Jesus in our house goes well. And you're sitting on the floor, Mary, not helping at all. But she doesn't get rebuked by Jesus for it, Mary. Jesus actually says, Martha, hey, hey, calm down. Mary's discovered something, and it's not going to be taken away from her because she's discovered the one thing, the most important thing that you can figure out. So what is it that Jesus is seeing? What is it that he's trying to get Martha to see? What is the one thing that Mary has discovered that is so important that won't be taken away from her? I believe it's Jesus himself. I believe that Mary has discovered the most important thing is the worship of Jesus Christ. It is to sit at his feet, to be face to face with him, to learn from him, to, to listen to his voice, to hear him teach, to just sit in his presence, to be in awe, and to respect and honor and glorify his authority and to make him and the time in his presence the priority. Jesus himself is that one thing. Because again, church, I've done this before. I am this person so many times. We get caught up with with the to-do lists. You know what I'm saying? The to-do list of of not just life, but even in church. I've got to serve. I've got to do this. I've got to make sure I do this. I've got to get plugged in. I've got to do this Bible study. I've got to lead this class. I've got to do this. It's like those are not bad things. Again, I don't think Martha was doing anything bad. I don't think we do anything bad when we do that. But where it gets wrong is when we think those things are priority. And we lose sight of the fact that the number one thing that we can do as followers of Jesus Christ is be in relationship with him, is sit at his feet, listen to his voice, talk with him, learn from him, spend time with him. That's the one thing. And we miss it. Just like Martha, we miss it. But Mary gets it, and it won't be taken 
away from her. So I believe today, the thing that Jesus wants us to see is that we need to get back into a place. We're in a brand new year. Things, again, we're in an unexpected change kind of moment, but what a great opportunity. What a fresh start to say, I need to go and sit back down at the feet of Jesus. Today, every day, from this point forward. And what's one way that you can do that? Because this is what we're here to talk about. It's the word. God's word. Do you know how big of a gift our Bibles are to us? You know how important they are to our walks with Jesus, our relationship with him? Our Bibles, God's word, is one of the ways that we can be like Mary and that we can sit at the feet of Jesus, that we can worship him, that we can hear him. God speaks. He communicates. Here's what Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank. You see trees again, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. We need to spend time in God's word. It is one way, again, that we can sit at the feet of Jesus, that we are in relationship with him. It's a priority in our relationship with Jesus. We absolutely need to spend time in God's word. It's important. It's important to sit and, and like this verse says, to, to not just read through it. How many times have we done that? To get through your daily reading plan. And it's not that those are, it's a bad thing, but some, I've been there. I've been in that place where I'll read through something and go, okay, cool. But did I really spend time with my, father, my heavenly father right there? Or did I meditate on his word and say, God, what are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me right now, Lord? Do you have something for me, God? Are, are you trying to, to correct me, God? Are you trying to encourage me? Are you trying to teach me right now to sit and to meditate? Because when we do that, we're, we're recognizing the importance. We're recognizing that God moves through his word in our lives, that it's not a book. It's not just words and letters on a page, but it's him in this relationship, and it's alive, and God wants to move in our lives through his word. Think of it like this, okay? Um, so you, you look at Mary and the situation that she was in, and what Mary really is showing us is how we have to choose to prioritize time with God, that the choice to sit at the feet of Jesus is a choice that only we can make. Nobody else can make that choice for you. Nobody else can force you to be in relationship with Jesus Christ and to prioritize time with him. Only you can do that. So you, you have this moment, and again, it seems simple. It seems like Mary just went and sat somewhere, but what, if you don't know this story, if you haven't heard it before, there's some other details to what's actually going on here, some context that makes what Mary did even more significant, even more of the right thing. So one of the things that we need to know is um, at this point in time and in the culture of the world at this place and where they were, um, a house was often divided up. A house like Martha's was divided up in spaces that men could be in and women can be in, okay? But it was divided. There were spaces where a woman belonged and there were spaces where men could be. One of those spaces that, a man, that men were supposed to be, that only men were supposed to be in, was this public kind of living room space. And it's where men would communicate. They would have meetings. They would teach. They would talk, right? So you have Jesus coming in. It's all the disciples, these other men sitting in the room together. But you have Mary in there. Mary has just crossed a huge social boundary. She has just like broke a big rule. To some people, her sitting in that room amongst men who are learning and with a, with a teacher, a rabbi in the room, it was seen as almost scandalous. They're like, this woman is not supposed to be in that room at that, at, in this culture, in this time. It was seen as crazy, but Mary was in there. And not only that, but one of the other things, again, is it was also not supposed to be, it was, it was decidedly in, in this culture that the teaching and learning from a teacher was, it was decidedly a male role. Like men were the ones who sat at the feet of the teachers, of the rabbis, and learned from them. So not only was Mar or Mary in this room, but she was learning the way only a man was supposed to learn from a teacher. Two really big, like, cultural boundaries that she just shatters by stepping into a room and sitting at someone's feet. And she wasn't rebuked for it, right? Jesus didn't go, hey, you, did you forget the rules? No, 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 no. Jesus is like, no, 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 she's discovered the thing. And not only she discovered it, but no matter what was thrown her way, come on, y'all, this, this is us too, she chose to say, those things don't even compare to the importance of sitting at my Lord's feet. 
None of those things compare to me making sure that I am prioritizing time in my Lord's word, getting fed by him, worshiping him, praising him, learning from him. That is it. And nothing else will stand in the way. Can we be like Mary? Can we say, that's a choice, and I will make that choice every single time? No matter if the world tells me I'm wrong for it, no matter if, if other people rebuke me for it or say that I'm doing things wrong or I'm not, I'm not following culture the way I should. Hey, it's not about that. It's about Jesus and doing what he's called me to. Here's a, here's a way to kind of think of this, okay? Anybody ever been to a buffet restaurant? Come on, Golden Corral. Yeah. Come on. Don't go there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, think of it like this, okay? Imagine you and I, some friends, go to eat a Golden Corral together. Your choice. <laughs> um, we go to Golden Corral. We get in there. We get to our table. We get up, and you're like, hey, let's go get our food. Yeah, all right, you go, sure, you go get your food, you go grab your plate, you, you know, you fill it up, you got the mac and cheese, you mix it with some random other thing that shouldn't go with mac and cheese because you can do that at a restaurant like that, You're just hurting your stomach, and then you go, you fill it up, you come back, and I'm still sitting at the table, You're like, hey, you gonna get your food? Well, I'm waiting for somebody to bring it to me, it's a restaurant, you bring me my food, and you're standing there with your Chicken, mac and cheese, pizza, whatever. <laughs> That's what I get. I just let you guys in on that. <laughs> You're like, no, no, it's, it's like a buffet, man. Like, you, you've got to go and get it yourself. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just going to wait for somebody to bring it to me so that, that I can get fed. Like, somebody else has got to bring, do the work and bring me my food. You know, I'm just going to wait. It's a buffet, dude. Like, you're this close to slapping me. You're like, come on, dude. Get up and get a plate. Like, go up there and slap some mac and cheese on your plate. Like, you have to do it. Whose responsibility is a buffet to get the food? Yours. Whose responsibility is it to get into the word and be fed? Yours. Ours. So many times, come on, I'm not, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to hate. I'm not trying to be weird. I get it. I've been in that spot too. I've been in seasons where the way I was fed was a Sunday morning and that's it. I came in, I listened to a pastor preach. I went to a life group, heard somebody else read some scripture from the Bible, but never in any other point throughout that week did I dig into God's word myself and spend time with him. And if that's where we are, we're missing it. We're missing it. We're not going to, to be able to withstand the things that come our way. We, we're going to end up like this sequoia that's just been stomped all over, and we've let those things break us down. It's our choice. We have to make the choice, just like Mary, to prioritize time to go and get up and fill up that plate and be fed by the word of the Lord. Come on, church. It is our responsibility. Get up. Get fed. Make it happen. There's nothing wrong with coming into church and listening to us. If, that, if that's not what I'm saying, obviously, right? We're here. I want you to be here. This is good stuff. It's another way that God speaks and moves in our hearts and our lives. It's together as a congregation. It's another way in life groups that we're in community, and God moves in that way, right? But this is a relationship, and a relationship is a one-on-one -on -one thing. You've got to go. We've got to go. I've got to go and spend time with Jesus myself. I've got to go and sit at his feet like Mary face to face and be fed. I've got to get into his word and read and learn, and I've got to meditate on it, and I have to study it, and I've got to make it a priority every single day because that's what makes the difference. That's what makes sure I'm not standing there just starving at the buffet. I want to read a, another part of this to you really quick. Psalm, back to Psalm 1, okay? Psalm 1, 3 says, They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. The reason I'm taking a look back at that is because when we make the choice to be fed, when we make the choice to prioritize time in God's word, to prioritize time with Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, what we're doing is we're figuring out what it is that's going to help our hearts like we talked about back at the beginning of the message. Remember the fence that went around the trees? We're figuring out what that is for us. And the, the, the really good news for us is that when we prioritize that, when we prioritize time with Jesus and his word, we're not just getting a fence, okay? We're not just getting something that's keeping the bad out. No, 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 no. God is giving us, like it says in that verse, this ultimate source, this ultimate supply of strength and, and life that's going to make sure that our roots stand strong, that our tree stands so strong, that our foundation cannot be broken. It doesn't matter if somebody comes for years and stomps on it. When we've got the source that we need, when we've got God's word and we've got relationship with him, nothing can break us down. Nothing can shake us. It may not be easy, 
And we know that's a fact. It's not always easy. But because of Jesus, because of the source that he gives us, we can be like this tree planted along the side of this water source, just thriving, prospering, even when the wind and the waves come, even when things get crazy, even with all the foot traffic. We can keep going forward. We are not sentenced to fall today, church. Their leaves never wither. They prosper in all they do. That's us. And we give God the chance. And we prioritize that time with him and we use this endless supply of life that he is offering. So here's what I want to do really quick. Um, again, we're talking about scripture throughout all this series. And uh, we're talking about God's word. And, and to really be able to dig into God's word and, and to use it in our lives, we have to understand there's, there's just some practical steps for us when it comes to reading scripture that we need to know because I believe these practical steps and knowing them, they bring a lot of health. They bring, I'll even say they bring excitement. They bring life to our experience. You don't want to wake up every day and decide you're going to spend time with God's word and just be looking forward to getting done with it. You know what I'm saying? Our goal is to go, hey, I'm, I'm excited to get into God's word because I'm excited for the time I'm actually going to spend in God's word. The goal is to be, you ever read a book before, like a, like a fictional book, a story book, you're like, wow, this is great and like you didn't want to stop reading you one of the page. That's how we should feel about the Lord's word today. You know what I'm saying? You're like, hey, I've read like eight Harry Potters and I just couldn't put them down. It's like, hey, man, come pick up the Bible and let's feel that way too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, let's get into that. That's how we should feel about the Lord's word. And I, I do believe that there's some steps to help us in that, right? Some, some practical steps that we can take to help us get to that place where, where we can help our hearts, where we can stay rooted in God's word um, and keep moving forward no matter what's thrown our way, the challenging season. So two steps, okay? And the first one is really just something that I want you to know today, and that is that help is available, okay? Help is available, and what I mean by this is there are so many resources to help us as we dig into God's Word, okay? In fact, today, here at Grace and online, okay, for all of our online family, we've got resources on resources. We sent them out in our, in our chat online at the Connect Desk here in person. We've got Bibles, okay? Because you're going you're gonna to need one of those if you want to do this thing, okay? <laughs> if you want to dig into God's Word, you need God's Word, um, Okay, you've got, we've got our Bibles out there at the Connect Desk. We, I, I think there's a beautiful thing. I love using my, my app, my Bible app on my phone. I think that's a great thing. But I think there's something so beautiful about having a physical Bible in your hands, something that you can go through, take notes on with your hand, write it out, just spend time with the Lord in this physical Bible. So if you don't have one of those, you come see us at the Connect Desk, please. We want, we want to get you a Bible. We want to figure this out. We have other resources. We have a, a book out there called Divine Mentor that we're going to go through, and it actually goes along with what we're going to be teaching throughout this series. And, and, and this book is a great way just to dig in, right, to hear somebody else's perspective as they dig into God's Word and to, to help us see what God is really showing us as we dig into Scripture. Um, we also have some Bible plans. Um, there's there's um, Bible plans out of the Connect Us to go through the Bible in a year to help us. Sometimes, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I was just telling some friends this last night, it's like, I can't go to like the gym or something like that because I don't know how to set up a plan. Like, I don't know how to, how to go in and go, hey, I, like I know what I should do. You know, I know what, I know what weights I should lift. I know what exercise to do. So if you're that kind of person with just like, don't make fun of me. If you're that kind of person in general who's like, I need, a, I need help with a plan. Uh, I, I want to dig into God's word, but I'm intimidated is a good way to think of it. Like, I'm intimidated because I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start reading, how to read it, how much I should read it. It's like, go take a look at this Bible plan. See if this is something that can help you, okay? See if this is something that you can start following each day to help you consistently dig into God's Word, because that's huge. That consistency is going to make such a difference. And not only that, but um, we've got just people, okay? We've got people here who, who are down to, to answer questions, okay? You can, you can ask questions. Reach out. We would love to talk with you about questions you have about God's Word. Get into a life group. We're talking about life group launches soon, right? And we're going to talk more about these, these other steps you can take throughout this series, but Surround yourself with people who are asking the same questions. Let's talk about them together. Let's dig into God's word together and do life together and say, here, here's what God's saying to us. It's so important. The, the ultimate thing I'm trying to say is we don't want to just find an excuse to say, I, I can't get into this. I, like, we have to stop being the people who are standing waiting for the food to be brought to us, and we've got to go get it ourselves. We've got, to, we've got to remove the excuses today, church. And I don't mean to say that in a harsh way. I'm that person, okay? I can't tell how many times I've come up with excuses to say, oh, just, there's this going on. It's too much. I don't, have, I don't understand how I should. I don't understand the scripture. I don't, I don't have enough time on my plate to dig into God's word. It's like, no, 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 no. Priority, like Mary. We've got to get in there. We've got to do it so we can be that, have that strong foundation. The other thing we have, too, just one more, is if you got a bulletin today, in that bulletin, um, um, we've put together some questions, some really good questions, so that when you leave today, um, you can start these questions, and we'll have them throughout the series, looking at questions to ask about God's Word. 
questions that pertain to you. How, how, how is God's word impacting my life? All these questions that you can deep dive on to, to really spend more time and think about what you're reading. So take a look at those. Again, we'll have more. But just again, help is available. Get the resources you need. Ask for the help that you need. And let's keep going. The last, okay, the second and last little point that I have for you is just start somewhere. Okay, when it comes to God's word, it's a great idea just to start somewhere. And start somewhere, what I mean by that is don't, you don't have to shoot for the stars when you dig into the word, okay? You've got a whole life to live, and you get to spend that whole life digging into God's word, okay? And I think it's important to realize that a small start is a great thing. So if today you decide, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to read one chapter, praise God. And every day, I'm going to start by reading just one chapter a day from Scripture, that's all I'm going to do is one chapter a day. That's a great start. And here's why. A couple reasons why I think that that's a great start is, one, it's so important for us, again, super practical, to find our floor, okay? Mr. Kobe Edwards, one of the elders here at church, he, he, he taught me this um, a while back, and I just, it, it stuck with me, okay? Is whenever we jump into something new, whenever, whenever we set a goal for ourselves, oftentimes we shoot too big for something that we're just in the season we're in, wherever we're at in our stage of life, it's just kind of too far to reach. And I'm not saying you're incapable of doing stuff, but let's be real, sometimes we are. And if, if, if we set a goal, and I've done this, and I can't achieve that goal, and I begin to realize that that whole process of achieving that goal is falling apart, I get discouraged. And if I get too discouraged, I oftentimes give up. It's not a good thing, but it, I'm a human being, and I make mistakes, and it's part of who I am. Right? So, when we set a floor and we set a goal for ourselves that is absolutely attainable, something that is almost impossible to fail at, that one chapter a day, a few verses a day, whatever that may be, what we're doing is, is we're building confidence. We're building consistency and in, in, in time in the thing that we want to achieve. Time in God's word, time in being fed. So again, maybe for you, it's that one chapter. Find that floor for you. Where's that place you can start? The, room, the goal is, is, is there's always room for improvement. We'll keep reading more. We'll keep digging in more. We'll keep growing from that point. But find a floor. Start somewhere. And the other part of that that's so important is I think that when we choose to, to, to kind of get that small beginning and to just start somewhere, we're, we're helping ourselves, we're giving ourselves a chance to really hear, to listen to what God might be trying to say to us. And what I mean by that is um, oftentimes we read through Scripture. I read through Scripture, and I'll just kind of go through, again, with the goal to check off my, my daily reading plan and say, oh, I read through it. I got through those four chapters, and I got it done. But maybe if I, if I were to slow down and just take a look at the one chapter that I'm reading, I could actually spend time in it. I, I can actually meditate on it like the, like the verse in Psalm 1 says. And I can actually listen and ask God, hey, what, what are you trying to say to me through this, God? My goal shifts from just trying to read through the Bible to actually hear God speak because this is his word. And he wants to speak to us through his word. But we have to give him the chance. We have to listen for his voice. We have to quiet ourselves. Put away the to-do list. Put away all the rushing. Put away all the other stuff that's happening and say, God, what do you, what do you have for me right now? What do you want to say to me, Lord? Whisper to me, Father. Tell me what's, what's next for me. Tell me what, what my heart needs, God, whatever it is that you have for me. And one of the tools that we can use to help us with this is journaling, okay? I don't know if you've ever journaled before or wrote down what you've read for the day and, and, and wrote down a prayer or whatever it is that you feel like God has laid in your heart, but that's exactly what that is. It's, it's getting a piece of paper, getting a notebook, and each day as you jump in and you read through your chapter, you write down, it, you, you talk to the Lord, and afterwards you write down what you think God is speaking to you through this chapter. What is it that God has revealed to you? What is it that God has encouraged you in? What is it maybe sometimes that God's gone, hey, that's not it, and he's rebuked us in because he loves us? And he wants to see us get better. What is he speaking to us? And we write that out. And we take time in that. And we're not trying to force it. We're not trying to make something get on the page. Some days you'll go and you go, I just kind of struggling with this one. I don't, I don't know, Lord. But I come back the next day and I spend time with him again. And I listen for his voice. Because he will speak. Right? There may be days where it doesn't feel like it's all there. But the more time we spend in that, the more we'll hear him speak. The more time we dig in and the more time we sit at his feet the more we'll hear him speak. The closer we'll get, the deeper that relationship we'll get. So I have a, just a while back in the beginning of my um, walk with Jesus, early on, uh, there was a frustration of mine, and my frustration came from my inability to stop sinning. It sounds really funny and basic and silly, right? But it's real. It's like I, I struggled with the same sin over and over and over again, and I was frustrated. It's like, God, like, 
I'm supposed to become a new person when I become a follower of yours. I'm, my life is supposed to change forever, but I still have this struggle and it's hard to say no to this thing and, and I keep making this same mistake and God, I'm angry at myself and I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want to be this way anymore, God. And I just I was learning to hate myself. Then I read this verse in, in, in Philippians. It's Philippians 2.13. It says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. See, in that day, as I read that scripture, the thing that God revealed to me was that he was working inside of me. That the change that I was expecting in my heart and in my life was not something that I could bring about myself. No matter how frustrated I got, no matter how upset I was with myself, the only person that could change me was him. It was his work to do. And my job was not to try and help myself or fix myself, but just to surrender to him. To surrender and to trust that he was going to make things new. That he was going to come in and begin a new work in my heart to help me become the person that he had called me to be. That he was going to literally change my desires. That's how he works. The things I wanted. The things that maybe my flesh wanted and take them and say, no, no, no. Here's what you need. But not just what you need. Now you want it. Now you want my word more. Now you want time with me more. Now you want to serve and love your neighbor more. Now you want to grow and see this world change for the better more. That's what he does. But I had to give it to him. I had to surrender to him. He speaks in his word, church. So for us today, the, the one thing we've got to do is we've got to be like Mary. We've got to go sit at the feet of Jesus. Because when we go sit at the feet of Jesus, when we dig into his word, when we spend time with him, he strengthens us. He makes us like a sequoia that will never fall. More, more than just a fence, but planted in and by a source with supply that never runs dry that will give us every single thing we need to stand strong and keep moving forward he brings life a life source that will never wither that is who he is that's what he does we've got to choose him he's got to be our priority his word has got to be priority in our lives can we pray heavenly father i thank you so much for today God, I thank you that we get to be here in your house. Lord, even with all that's going on, we're thankful that we get to come together as a family, whether here, God, or at home. And we get to worship you, God. We get, we get to listen for your voice. We thank you for your word, God. Your word that is a gift to us, God. It truly is, Lord. And, and forgive us for, for the times when we take it for granted, God, when, when we just see it as another book to fill a spot on a shelf. When we just see it as a bunch of words that maybe we don't understand that's intimidating, God. But help us to see it as more than that, God. Help us to see it as crucial, as important to our relationship with you, God. Help us to see it as a way that you want to talk to us, God. As, as, as a way that our Heavenly Father wants to communicate to His kids and love on them and help them, help their hearts, protect them and do more than that, God. But strengthen them and build them up so that they can be ready for whatever this world throws their way, God. And not only that, but so they can make a difference, so that we can make a difference in this world, Jesus. For you and for your kingdom, for your glory, God. Help us to prioritize you, God. Help us to get up, to fill up our plates. It's our choice. Give us the strength to make that choice, God, every day, to be in your presence, to sit at your feet. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right.